Hello, I'm Kevin Van Polpering with Vibration Research, and today we're going to be talking about force limiting vibration tests. We're often asked the question, can you do a force limiting vibration test within Vibration View? And the answer to that question is definitely yes. Force limiting is essentially the same thing as applying a notch to an accelerometer, except it uses a force transducer. Uh, force limiting is generally used in satellite testing applications where engineers are looking for a cost-effective method to reduce the over-testing problems associated with hard mounting a satellite to the shaker head. Today we're going to be demonstrating the force limiting capabilities and unfortunately due to a scheduling conflict the VR satellite was unavailable so we'll be using the second best alternative which is a 22 inch lawnmower blade uh, the reason we're using the lawnmower blade is because there are several resonances within the frequency range and several bending moments that uh, we'll be able to limit the force on. Uh, the basic setup is going to be a sine sweep from 50 Hz to 1000 Hz at 3 G's and we'll be controlling using an accelerometer mounted on the uh, fixture and we'll do one sweep and then the second sweep we will actually apply a force limit to one of the three axes of the force transducer. So let's get started. Uh, the first step is going to be setting up the inputs and to do that you click configuration and then inputs and it brings you to this screen. Uh, what we have is an accelerometer mounted on channel 1 and that is 102 millivolts per G. And it's going to be mounted on the head expander. So I'll just call it head EXP. The force transducer, uh, we have one axis associated with each input channel. It's a triax accelerometer. And there are charge barrels. The, the signal to that accelerometer requires some conditioning. Uh, to set that up, you need to go to the advanced settings for your inputs and enable the conditioner. So once I select this checkbox, you can see a dialog box pops up. It says conditioner sensitivity. And then you have to make sure that you have the select or the, the correct units selected. Millivolts per picocoulomb. Uh, and I'm going to enable the conditioner for all three. 0.1 millivolts per picocoulomb and then we have the transducer. Uh, this is another key step here. You need to have the correct uh, units. So picocoulombs per, we're using a force transducer, it's picocoulombs per newton. I'm going to go through and change all three here. and then we're going to input the sensitivities. Uh, the correct sensitivities are 7.19 newton or picocoulombs per newton, 7.19 and 3.37 picocoulombs per newton. I'll also change these channel labels. We have force in the x-axis, force in the y-axis, and force in the z-axis. So if I hit apply, all of these conditioners and transducer sensitivities will automatically be entered into the software. So now we're ready to begin the test. What we're looking at here is the acceleration profile and this is simply going to be our control, the accelerometer on channel one during this first sweep we'll also be monitoring the force so this is going to be your X Y and Z direction on the force transducer and the third graph here is just going to be the output drive so if I hit start the test will begin to come up to level and again we're just simply doing the sweep we're going to view the response see the force levels on this first sweep and then when we do it again will apply a force limit or a notch on uh, one of the three axes on our force transducer. 
So you can see right here, this is going to be the first resonance. And the force, the force graph corresponds or follows along with the acceleration profile up here. Uh, but what we're looking at is the x-axis, y-axis, and the z-axis. Let's take a look at the data. So if we look at the top graph, this is going to be our control. You can see that this is the first resonant frequency. We're controlling at three G's, and when we go into the resonance, you can see control peaks to roughly, we'll call it four G's at 66 hertz. So that's an increase of roughly 30% in acceleration. But now if we look at the second graph below, this is our force graph, you can see that um, the Z direction is right here. When we began the test, it was at 82 Newtons. When we get into our resonance right around here, you can see that 82 turns into 429 Newtons, or 427 Newtons. That corresponds to a roughly five times uh, increase in force, and that just shows the uh, that just shows the issues associated with hard mounting of your satellite. So what we're going to do in this test is apply a notch to all three axes in uh, using our force transducers. Uh, we'll apply a notch here at 150 newtons on the z axis. And then the X and Y axis will apply a notch at 10 Newtons. So that's going to be this line right here. To do this within the software, we'll go into the Edit Test and navigate to the Notching tab. Uh, as I said, force limiting is nearly identical to notching uh, in accelerometer, but we're using the force transducer. Uh, channel 2 is going to be the x-axis. What we're going to do is apply a notch at 10 newtons. So I need to navigate to the units drop-down, select force, and then newtons. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for uh, the y-axis and also for the z-axis, but here we're going to apply a notch at 150 newtons. Now that we've set up the force limiting, let's go ahead and run the second sweep. <clears throat> so we're coming up to level. If you remember, the resonance was at about 60 or 70 hertz. So we'll begin to see the drive notch right about here. <clears throat> you can see it reached um, 154 newtons and then we cut out the drive. So there's our 150 Newton force limit, and towards the end, we'll again have one more 150 Newton uh, force limit, 
and then we'll hit the 10 on the Y and X axis. So 10, here's another notch. And another small one, and another small one. So let's take a look at the data. If we take a look at the top graph, this is going to be our control. Uh, notice the line, I have a vertical line going across all of the graphs here. Uh, but the first notch, if you remember, we applied a notch in the Z direction at 150 newtons. That's going to be this trace. We applied a notch at 10 newtons on the Y axis and also the x-axis. So if we go along right here you can see we're going into resonance. This is 150 newtons and because we were going to exceed 150 the controller reduced the drive. The interesting thing here is pretty much at the exact same point we are coming up to 10 newtons on uh, the y-axis. So not only did we apply the notch here, we also applied it here. So you can see the output drive reduces, 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 and then realizes, hey, everything is below the notch. Now we increase the drive uh, and continue as normal. Uh, and then if you look towards the end, uh, this is roughly 380 hertz. You can see there we have a notch on the x-axis. So again, we're controlling on acceleration. You have a 3G sweep. And then we switch to extremal control here, the force limiting control on the x-axis. So we reach 10 newtons, cut out the drive, cut out the drive, uh, and then the response begins to go down. So we continue along, again, back on acceleration in 3Gs. Uh, we have a couple other slight force limiting moments here. Um, same principle, we're, we're reducing the acceleration or the control to limit the force on each of the three axes on the PCB uh, force transducer. So what we've just demonstrated is applying force limiting to each of the three axes of a force transducer independently. And another option would be to force limit using an average of two of those channels. You would do that by defining an open channel using a math equation as the average of the other two. Uh, and a side note with that is you would need to have an open channel on your control unit to do it. So that's force limiting. We'd like to say thank you to PCB for allowing us to use their force transducer for this demonstration. If you'd like any more information regarding that sensor, please contact them at the address below. Or if you would like help setting this up in your own laboratory, please feel free to contact Vibration Research. Thank you for watching.